Hey everyone and welcome to another video in this series. This is part 3 and today we are actually going to be doing something cool which will be um, trying to create a page post using the page token that we got in the previous step. Alright, so uh, you can see I'm already set up here with my ng-rock environment and also my dev server. So uh, I'm just going to get right to it now. So the first thing we want to do when we want to create a page is we need to have a scope for creating pages. Because right now uh, we just have the pages reach engagement, which is good enough for grabbing a page token, but not good enough for creating content on the page. All right. So let's go ahead and add this scope. And this scope is called uh, Pages Manage Posts. So let's add that one there. And now we should actually be able to create posts if we get all the permissions that we would like when we log in. All right. So if you jump to our API file, which is inside this hello file, uh, we do have a bunch of Facebook stuff in here, like getting the access token, debugging token, getting uh, the pages based on our token. I kind of want to clean up this stuff before I continue. So I'm just going to grab all of this. And then I'm going to create a new folder in the root, which is called, called API helpers. And I make sure I create it outside the pages directory so I don't accidentally make a route or a, a something inside my app. And here I'm going to create a file called fb.ts. I'm going to copy everything in here, save it, go back to my hello file, and also copy the rest up here, which is the app ID and the secret, and also the URL. Jumping back to the Facebook file, putting everything here. All right, I'm going to update this import. And now I'm going to put the export keyword in front of all my functions here. Cool. So now I'm going to go back to my hello file here and I'm just going to import everything. Then I move to the other file. Cool. Okay. So when we create a Facebook post, we need a Facebook page token. And we could potentially just have it on the front end, but uh, I would like to do it a more real world way where we would store the page token on the back end. Okay, so we need some kind of way to store that token. And I could put it in a variable, but then I would perhaps have an issue when the next JS server recompiles. So uh, I am going to stick it in a file instead. So I'm going to create a new file here to manage that. And I'm just going to call it storage. And in here, I'm going to be creating two functions. One is going to call set page. And basically what this does, it takes in a page ID and it takes in a page token. And then it stores it somewhere in a file. So I'm going to need the file system. I'm going to import fs from fs, file system. Then I'm going to call fs write file sync. And I'm going to save it to a page.json file. And I'm going to save whatever I get in here as arguments, stringify it, and that should be it. Okay. Then I'm going to create another function called get page. And in here, I don't really expect to get anything. I'm just going to call the same API here, but instead of write, I'm going to call uh, read file synchronous and here I just specify what I want to read and then 
the format that I would like, which is UTF-8. UTF and then I am gonna, oop, gonna make sure that I pass it before I return it. So I'm gonna call return JSON pass page. All right, these two helper functions should help me store the information about the page. So if I jump back to hello, in here when I log in and grab the token here, I'm gonna call now my set page. Yes, automatically importing from API helpers. And then I'm gonna pass in the page ID and the page token. And that can be found here. Uh, of course, right now I'm assuming that I just get one page and that's the one I'm saving. In a real world app, you would probably need to manage multiple ones, but here I'm just assuming I get one. So I'm actually gonna create a new variable just to make it a little more neat here. Like this. And I'm just gonna do a check here to see if we get a page up here. If we don't, we want to return res status 500. Yeah. If we do though, we can grab the ID and we can also get the access token. Okay. Now we do get an error here. All right, quick note. If you're trying to use the file system module and you're getting an error, you might have to add this inside your next config.js uh, because it might not realize, even though it's on the server, it might not realize that it is in fact on the server when it calls that page. So we need to be explicit about it and add this piece of code in here. Okay, if you do that though, we should be good to go and we should be setting the page here. And just to verify that, we can actually make a log statement here and then call our get page function here. Okay, let's try to jump back to our app and let's try attempt to do a login here. Yeah, I am continuing with the test user that we used also in the previous video. I press continue. I'm getting some data back. If I jump back to my code, I can see I get the page ID and the page token here. So great stuff. I can see that I have a page.json file here. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to read this file now whenever I create my post because I need to know the page ID and I also need to know the page token. All right, beautiful. Let's create a new file here and let's call it post. And uh, for starters, I'm just gonna copy my hello here and then basically remove everything inside here. Actually, this was just faster creating it from scratch. <laughs> All right. So since we're in TypeScript, we should actually use uh, next API request here and next API response here, just to get some auto completion. After doing that, we can in here uh, basically call that handler, which will create our Facebook post. And uh, if you remember from earlier, we created this Facebook file where we have our Facebook logic. So let's jump in here and actually create that function. Okay, so once again, we're gonna use the graph API for Facebook. So we're gonna do something similar here. Oh. So let's initially copy this and change the name. Let's call it create, uh, let's create FB post or create page post perhaps. 
And then in here, we still want to pass the access token. So that looks right. Um, but instead of getting to this route, we want to get to the page ID route. Okay, so pretty simple. Uh, up here, I still want a token. This time it's a page token. And in addition to that, I also want a page ID, which is also gonna be a string. Okay, so notice the route here. We have the base URL and then just the page ID here at the root. And then we pass in our access token. Okay, and when we create a post, it's also gonna be a post method. So we make, need to make sure that we pass that into our fetch. And then down here, in terms of data, uh, we don't get a data key back. We basically get a success. That's going to be a, yeah, a boolean value. So that one we can return. Now something might go wrong. So we could also check for any possible error here. And a Facebook error is an object where we have a st string message that says what went wrong. Either way, we're just going to lock it just to see if what we got back is what we expected. And actually, I'm not sure if we get a success back here. I think we might just get an ID. So let's check up on that. Okay, after creating this method and exporting it, we can jump back to our post route and then we can call it. Oh, we need to make sure. Actually, I think it's okay. Let's see, create page post. And then, oh yeah, we forgot something. So in addition to the access token, which is a little bit wrong here, we also take in a message. So this is the message that we want to basically add to our Facebook post. So for now, I can just uh, grab that from also a parameter up here, but we need to make sure we pass it in like this. Cool, let's jump back to post. And then let's actually try to create a post here. So uh, what do we need here? So first of all, we need the page ID and the page token. And for that, I'm just gonna call this method that I created earlier, which is get page. That basically looks inside the JSON file. And uh, as I call that, I can just do, uh, let's see here. I don't think I typed it. Okay, I didn't type it. So here yeah, it doesn't know what this is going to result in, but I do know, so I can actually just uh, define it here. So I'm getting a page ID back and I'm also getting a page token back. To verify that, I can open the page.json file see that we have a page ID and we have a page token. Okay, so the typing sh should be correct. Now let's go back here. Now we should get some autocomplete. Page ID, page dot page token. And then last but not least, we need to send a message. And for now, I'm just gonna put in test to see if it works. And if nothing failed, we can send the response back where we say, mm, great, something like this. Okay, so now let's jump to our front end and create a new button in here. You can just call it create new post. And we're gonna call create post, a create post function that we're going to find up here. And here I am going to do something similar to this. 
but instead of reaching the hello route, I'm going to be reaching the post route. And since I'm using the same ngrock URL, I might as well grab that and put it into a variable. Let's call it API URL to find it up here. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, okay, so I actually missing something in this URL, which is going to be the slash feed. It's not an, it's not enough just to say page ID here. I also need to put in the feed uh, part of the parameter, and to verify it, we can always go to the. Well, not here. This is the Facebook page for our test user, but we could go to the graph explorer in here to kind of confirm that. Okay, let's try once again. I'm going to press login. It's going to get a fresh token. And then I'm going to press create new post. And this time it says message great. So it seems like we create our post and we can see here that we actually get an ID back and not a success. So uh, I need to correct the typings here and then return the appropriate property. Okay, cool, that's working. Now we can verify that that post is created by going into Facebook, then going into pages, and then going into the page that we just logged in as. And these names are very similar, so I'm not even sure which one it is, but let's, uh, let's just try this one. Test two. Do we have any posts in here? It appears like we have one called test explanation marked one hour ago. So something tells me that's from a previous testing I did. Let's go to test page instead and see that. Oh, we actually have one here called test with a big T posted one minute ago. So this is the post we just created from our code. That's pretty awesome. It's working. Now, just to give it another whirl, another test, we can, um, yeah, maybe change the message here. So if it goes to the post route, we can say cool beans. Jump back here, press create new post. Go back here, we can refresh this page. And now we should be able to see cool beans in here. It may not be as instant as a thought it would be. Let's try to do another refresh. All right, it's here. It just was translated to Danish. So, yeah, there we are. Cool beans. Okay, that's all I want to show in this video. Hope you learned something. And, yeah, see you.